This is my second attempt at the cyanotype printing process. These are the prints that I received today. I also tried it on a 100% cotton t-shirt and it came out okay, but it does bleed so that it turned the shirt completely light blue. And this is how I utilized one of the prints. I utilized it for the front of my art journal. So my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe and hit that notification bell and you will be notified when I upload additional content. So let's start by venturing down into the woods. My husband is taking me on our little ATV down into the woods behind our home to find some plants that we can utilize to put on the paper to utilize the sun to get this cyanotype process. Now the cyanotype process is a photographic printing process that produces this cyan blue imprint. Engineers use this process well into the 20th century as a simple and low cost way to produce copies of drawing, which of course were referred to as blueprints. This process uses two chemicals, ferric, ammonium, citrate, and potassium ferrocyanide. And you can purchase those in the dry form in a bottle that you can store them in. And all you need to do is add distilled water to the dried form, shake it up, and it has a shelf life that is at least a year old. All of the prints that you see today, I produced using two capfuls of each. So I mixed it twice. I did one capful of the ferric ammonium citrate, one capful of the potassium ferrocyanide, mixed it together, coated all the paper, did the paper prints, and then I mixed it again to put on the t-shirt and that absorbed a lot more than the paper. So let's get started. We've collected all of our greenery. Let's get started with the watercolor paper is what I'm using. It's 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. And I am just going to trim that down into the sizes that I want. Here is the two chemicals in the form that I purchased, and I will put a link in the description below on what I have used. Again, as I said before, one cap full of each. I'm mixing it with a sponge brush and just coating each piece of paper. I'm allowing that paper to dry, and then we will put the greenery that we've just gathered on top of that dried sheet of paper. So let's just get this paper coated. And you can see this cap full of each coats quite a few pieces of paper. And I have decided to make bookmarks and tags and some just five by seven prints that I can use in my journals and so forth. So now I'm just laying the greenery on top of a piece putting it upside down in a picture frame. I purchased um, picture frames. They came in a pack of three. So I got three picture frames, I think for five bucks. So I have six picture frames. This is going to make it a lot easier than the first time because when you put that backing on, like I'm doing here, that holds that greenery tight to the piece of paper that we're trying to turn. So this is going to turn that <clears throat> cyan blue everywhere around or everywhere that the greenery is not. If that makes sense. I'm also trying it on some um, negatives, but those did not turn out. I don't think that my blacks were black enough. So here we are at the little deck outside my studio and there's Tommy helping me. And I'm just going to turn these over and let the sun start activating that chemical. So I'm laying them so the sun is shining directly on them. 
and you can see it's a nice cloud free sunny day here in North Georgia. And we will let those sit until we start to get a pretty decent color. Now, the last time I did it, I put, I did it, um, coated them and then used them immediately. <clears throat> and when I walked out into the sun, it started turning immediately. This time, when I looked at it, it didn't appear to be turning, and I thought that I had gotten a complete failure. So I brought everything in. I put water, distilled water, or just regular water in one pan, and then I put a teaspoon of peroxide in the other. So you can see when I hit it with that peroxide how it activates that blue. So it is the intensifier of the peroxide. This looks almost... Um, orange, like a dark orange. I rinse the chemical off and stick it in the peroxide water and it turns. So it was completely different than the first time I did it. Like I said before, the first time I did this, and you can, I'll link the, the video to my first attempt down below in the description as well. And you can just see the difference because it, you could see it turn in, in my previous video. This time, not so much. But the results were the same. So if anyone understands what is going on there, please put, some, put down in your comments. This is the negative, and you can see that that black wasn't black enough on the negative. So it just really turned into a blue sheet of paper, which I'll use but it's not what my intent was. So it was kind of a fail. So I'm just going to go through and rinse off all of these and set them aside. I really like that one. That one I'm going to use for an ATC. And I actually did this in doing this for, for a piece of Happy Mail that I'm sending out this week. So let's try that t-shirt. And I took a piece of plywood, essentially, and put it underneath the shirt. I stole this shirt out of my husband's t-shirt drawer, so he's not too happy about it because he won't wear it. And, and it's pretty big on me, but that's all right. So I'm just coating it. And you can see it, it uh, doesn't coat as easy as the paper. And, you know, in theory, I thought, oh, this is going to look so good. I'll put this, this chemical in here and I will just have this nice, beautiful cyan blue on the front of this solid white t-shirt. Well, <laughs> what I wasn't really planning on was the chemical staining the rest of the t-shirt. So we'll get to that a little bit later, but let's get that coated. We'll lay a couple of ferns on it and I'll stick a piece of glass over it. And I'm just going to hook that glass with some binder clips to, to keep it on there. And we'll stick it out in the sun. And now we'll rinse it. Now watch what happens when I start to rinse that chemical starts to come out and it activates that blue everywhere it touches. So I decided, well, what the heck, we'll just, we'll just stick it all in there and we'll just make it a light blue t-shirt. So I, you know, it, does it work on fabric? Absolutely. Did it work the way I intended? Eh, not so much, but these are my finished pieces, and I think they all turned out pretty good. I utilized one for my journal cover, and that completes the process. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that subscribe button and come back and join me for future videos. And if you would, hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when I upload them. And please share the video and, and uh, help me grow my channel. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate your comments. Appreciate you being here. Bye for now.